the end of 2022, and I wanted to share some of the skincare products that really impressed me over the past year. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board-certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. If you've been enjoying these videos throughout the year or you're new to the channel and enjoying it, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. My favorites videos are fun to do, but they're also kind of challenging because they really make me sit with my routine and figure out why do I gravitate towards this product? What is it about this cleanser or this sunscreen or this serum that makes it special? And why is it something that I repurchase or continue to put in my routine, even though I try hundreds and hundreds of products throughout the year? So I'm going to do my best to articulate that for you. And it's it's also worth noting that these are not all new product launches in 2022. These are just things that are part of my routine in 2022. They may have been part of my routine in 2021 or 2020, but they continue to be my favorites or I sort of rediscovered them this year. Let's start off with cleansers because I feel like having a cleanser that you enjoy using that actually cleans your skin, that makes your skin feel good. Those are all really important ways to set up the rest of your skincare routine for success. And I have a few I want to review. So first up, I have the Rovectin Skin Essentials Conditioning Cleanser. And you can see I've used quite a bit of it. This is actually my second bottle for the year. And for me to go through a second bottle of literally anything means that I love it. Also, just from a practicality standpoint, I love a pump cleanser that I can just set up next to my bathroom sink, give myself one pump every time. And I like that it's in a clear bottle because I can kind of see how I'm going through the product. And I know those are just like little things, but when it comes to picking your favorites in the world of skincare, where there are so many amazing products, it's the little things that count. And those might be things that don't really stand out for you or aren't important to you, but it's something that personally draws me to the product over and over again. So I'm a double cleanse kind of gal. I like to do sort of an oil or balm or micellar water cleanse first and then follow with a water-based cleanser. So that Revectin cleanser is really kind of the second step of my cleansing routine, which is probably why I should have talked about this other cleanser first because it's my typical first step in my double cleanse routine. But that is the Hadalabo cleansing oil. This stuff has been my favorite of the bunch this year. I love this one because even though it's an oil cleanser, it's not a heavy, dense oil that really sits on the skin after you rinse it off. I find that after you put it on and sort of work it into the skin to break down any makeup or sunscreen, it really emulsifies well and rinses very clean. There are times even when I forget to go in with my second step in my cleanse because this leaves my skin feeling so clean after just that first step. Also, I think for an oil or balm cleanser, this is pretty easy on the eyes. I don't get any eye sting when I use it. And there are some oil and balm cleansers that literally leave me blinded afterward. One from eye pain, but two just leaving such a blurry film on my eyes. And I don't think there is a balm or oil cleanser out there that doesn't leave a little bit of film on the eyes, but compared to sort of the average balm or oil cleanser, this one is so much better. And then again, I have to give a nod to the packaging. I mean, it's hideous, uh, but super efficient for me. I love a pump on a cleanser because I can just set it next to my bathroom sink. I don't have to touch it when my hands are wet or pick it up and put it down. I don't have to take a cap off. I like a pump. And then the final cleanser that I'm going to talk about today. And if you watched my video on skincare products that sort of surprised me, I spoke about this in that video. And that is the Glytone Enhance Brightening Cleansing Powder. Never in my life did I think I would be like a cleansing powder kind of gal, but this in the shower is divine. I started using this cleanser during my pregnancy and I sort of never looked back. Because it is a powder cleanser, I do prefer to use it in my shower. And I usually only use it once or twice a week because it's both a physical and a chemical exfoliant. So the tiny little powder grit works as a physical exfoliant, but that sort of melts down into a creamy lather. And then you get the chemical exfoliating properties of this because it has glycol acid and malic acid and mandelic acid. And those are all alpha hydroxy acids that help sort of break down and slough off that dull outer skin cell layer to reveal brighter, fresher skin underneath. And if you don't know already, but if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you probably already know I have rosacea and people who have rosacea can have more sensitive skin. And I don't tolerate tons of different exfoliating acids, especially ones that are maybe more potent, but for whatever reason, this does not irritate my skin at all. And so it's a really nice way to get some alpha hydroxy acids into my routine without making my skin hurt. And then because this is a powder, which is sort of a more rare form of cleanser, I find it fun and interesting to use. And I feel like sometimes that is an undervalued component of skincare, having it be inspiring or experiential. And for me, even if I have a product that is super effective, super affordable, if I'm not drawn to it, if I don't want to use it, then it's missing something. So that's it for facial cleansers. I did have one body cleanser that really stood out among the rest for me. And that is the 
Naturium Glow Getter Multi Oil Body Wash. This stuff is so, so good, especially if you're a dry skinned gal like me, I'm obsessed. For me, this also doubles as sort of a shaving cream or shaving gel. So it kind of has a multi-purpose in my shower routine and I'm not the most efficient person, but if I can make things a little bit more efficient in my shower, I'm all for it. Okay, those are my favorite cleansers of the year. If you had a favorite cleanser that you think I would love, definitely put it in the comments below. Cleansers are probably my favorite skincare thing to try, maybe besides sunscreen. So I'm always looking for more options to test out and for ones to fall in love with. Let's move on to moisturizers. I sort of have a love-hate relationship with moisturizers. I hate them because sometimes I will try one and think it's amazing and then I'll continue to use it and then I'll realize it breaks me out or it clogs my pores and it's just so disappointing. So I really have to use a moisturizer for quite a long time, usually at least a couple of months before I feel confident in saying that this moisturizer is here to stay in my routine. But I love moisturizers because of all the things I use in my skincare routine, moisturizers are the best at repairing my skin barrier. And because I try so many products, because I have rosacea, because I do a lot of skin procedures on myself, my skin barrier is always in like an SOS situation. And so when I find good moisturizers that agree with my skin, I get so excited. So first up is the Dermatology Peptide Night Cream. I did a YouTube video with Susan Yara where we talked about sort of our holy grail skincare products and this one made it in there. It's interesting because it's called a night cream. So when I hear night cream, I expect something to be like really thick, super occlusive, but that is not this at all. This is sort of a mid-weight cream that glides on the skin so smoothly, rubs in so easily. I actually really like to use it as a moisturizer during the day because I feel like it layers so well under sunscreen on a day that I'm feeling particularly dry. And then I save even thicker, richer products for nighttime. But if you have more normal to combination to oily skin and you're looking for a nighttime moisturizer that isn't too occlusive or heavy and delivers some nice peptides to the skin, so it has some anti-aging properties to it as well, I think this is a great option. So aside from just personally enjoying this moisturizer, I feel like so many different types of skin could also find a use for this in their routine. And that's another thing as a dermatologist that makes a product a favorite is if I feel like it has really universal appeal. Another absolute favorite moisturizer of mine is the Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair Cream. This stuff is, it's special. The texture of this is so beautiful. It's a serum in cream. So when you take it out of the package, it feels almost like a wetter cream. If you've used like a gel cream, it kind of has that feel, but then it smooths into this beautiful thin serum that is still somewhat occlusive, but doesn't feel oily in any way. It's so nice to use. I like crave it and I look forward to putting it on my face. Enough of the moisturizers. Let's talk about sunscreens. I would not come at you with a favorites video without talking about at least a couple of my favorite sunscreens of the year. The first sunscreen that I have to give a shout out to is the Beauty of Chosan, the Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics SPF 50 PA++++. So in my mind, this this Beauty of Chosan sunscreen is like a gateway sunscreen. It shows you what is possible with Korean sunscreens and Japanese sunscreens and European sunscreens, and hopefully one day US sunscreens that you can have advanced UV filters. You can have a lightweight texture. You can have something that feels really cosmetically elegant, but still protects you. There are not a ton of sunscreens that I continue to repurchase because there's still so many out there that I need to try, but I went down and checked my stash and I still have like three more backups that I bought because one, this is like my try tried and true sunscreen. It's very reliable for me. I like to travel with it, but I also like to have these in my purse because if I'm outside, I like to reapply my sunscreen, but I also like to offer it to other people and be like, hold on, let me just blow your mind with this sunscreen for one second. My other favorite sunscreen of the year is the EV Technology Daily Defense Face Mousse SPF 50. And this is really interesting. This is a Swedish sunscreen and it's not a cream or a lotion or a gel. It's a foam because the reality of sunscreen application is even if you're very good at putting sunscreen on one time, time a day, you are probably worse at reapplying it. And I'm guilty of this too. Even as a dermatologist, I find it more challenging to reapply sunscreen throughout the day. So having something that has a little bit more staying power, I think offers this extra level of protection that I probably wouldn't get otherwise. When I went to Hawaii earlier this year, I pretty much exclusively wore this sunscreen and it did phenomenally well. I barely got any type of tan and I was in the ocean a lot. It is a little bit sticky to the touch. So it's not my 
favorite for every single day use, but for the beach, for long hikes, and also for long days where I'm not going to be able to reapply sunscreen that easily, or if I'm gonna be wearing makeup all day because it's an excellent makeup primer, I will reach for this. For the longest time, I wanted to try this sunscreen, but I couldn't get my hands on it because they didn't ship to the US, but now they do. And so I hope more of you get the opportunity to try it as well. Okay, I only have a few more favorites I wanna go over. One of them is Stradia Night Shift. This is sort of my retinoid of the year. I think it's great when people can incorporate a retinoid into their skincare routine because it helps with so many different skin issues that drive people crazy, whether that's fine lines and wrinkles, irregular pigmentation, dullness. Retinoids can sort of tackle it all. And finding a retinoid that works in your routine that agrees with your skin can be really challenging because one of the main side effects of retinoid products is irritation. And this Stradia Night Shift has sort of been a game changer for a lot of people. This uses 0.15% encapsulated retinol. So certainly not the strongest retinol on the market, but still very effective. And then this cream also has some other really supportive nourishing ingredients that help combat some of the irritation that retinol products can cause. So it has cholesterol and elantoin and squalane and marula oil. So the application of this is so lovely. I personally am at the point in my skincare journey where I can tolerate some stronger retinoid products on my skin, even like prescription tretinoin. But my neck and chest are a lot more sensitive and they cannot tolerate prescription tretinoin most of the time. And so having this product to use, especially on my neck and my chest in areas that tend to be a little more easily irritated is perfect. I feel like this was the year where so many people started using a retinoid regularly in their skincare routine. So if you were new to retinoids in 2022 and you found one that you really love and are able to tolerate, let me know in the comments below what it was because I have so many patients who want to be introduced to a retinoid that works well for their skin and I like to give them options. Another favorite product of mine for 2022 was Meliderm. In terms of what skincare category I would put Meliderm into, I would think of it more as like a pigment corrector. It has tons of lightening and brightening agents to help with irregular pigmentation, whether that's due to melasma or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now, really the gold standard in skincare when it comes to lightening and brightening is prescription hydroquinone and prescription tretinoin. But there are many reasons why people may not want to use those in their routine or can't use them in their routine. For example, if they're pregnant, and that's where Meliderm really stands out to me. It's a great over-the-counter option for people. Also, because it tends to be less irritating, it's better tolerated in skin folds. So even though this is not a personal thing that I struggle with, I get messages every single day on Instagram asking, how can I have brighter armpits, brighter groin folds? Can you help me with pigmentation on my elbows and knees? And I think this is a really great product to try for that. So if you've been on the hunt for a pigment corrector that does not have hydroquinone and does not have a retinoid in it, I think Meliderm is really where it's at. Another favorite of mine in 2022 was the Necessaire body lotion. I am not a moisturizer gal. I don't know what it is about putting on body moisturizer, but it's just a habit that I've always struggled to sort of get into. I was so jealous of my college roommate who would like always get out of the shower and just put their moisturizer on right away. And I, I don't know why I couldn't bring myself to do it, but since having the Necessaire body lotion in my routine, I've been so much better about it. And then my final favorite of 2022 is the Neocutis Lumiere Firm Illuminating and Tightening Eye Cream. And I'm sure so many of you are like, girl, this eye cream again. But hey, this is my favorites video and eye cream was sort of new to me this year or this is the year I sort of realized like maybe I really like it and I can't quit this one. It's a great texture. It's hydrating, but not so occlusive that I'm worried about it giving me milia. And most importantly, I really see results when I use this eye cream. I truly feel like it has helped a lot with my under eye circles and my fine lines. Now, it's not going to do the same thing that surgery or a laser procedure is going to do. That's not what eye cream is for. Eye cream is there to sort of support that skin to help you keep it nourished and hydrated. And that really is what I have found in this particular eye cream. And I know this is quite expensive, but a little, little, little bit goes a very long way. So one tube of this lasts me several months. And so I don't feel so bad about the spend. All right, that is a wrap on my 2022 skincare favorites. What were your favorite skincare products in 2022? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.